Ladies and gents, welcome to CG Reaction, and this is What If We Nuke the Moon by the channel Kurz Gazakt in a nutshell. Okay, so yeah, any time there is a video about space or anything space related, astrophysics, astronomy, I just love it if it's not apparent already. So, what if we nuke the moon? Well, it's going to be, I would have to guess it would be bad for Earth, obviously. Because lots of chunks of those uh, pieces could could fall on the earth. Big chunks. I mean, there will be pieces that will fall on earth, definitely. But how big the pieces are going to be? I mean, big pieces could land on earth if it just hit right in some places on the moon. So, yeah, and depends on the, you know, uh, how big of a nuke are we talking about. I mean, if it's just the largest nuke that we ever exploded, like Zar Bomba, I don't think it's going to be that dangerous or if it's going to be dangerous for the planet but if we nuke, uh, nuke it really you know big like thousand times more than Zara Bomba yeah I think it's going to be risky let's just say so yeah and uh, the uh, blast is going to be much bigger since there is no atmosphere on the moon so nothing is pushing it down there's no pressure there so it's just gonna expand expand into the uh, giant ball i think uh you know if any uh, radiation is going to be high not for people on the earth obviously but if like i mean if there is something on the moon or around the moon uh, radiation would be high but i don't think there's anything around the moon so i think that's not going to be an issue so unless it's a really big nuke probably won't do anything well let's see i could be wrong here too so yeah uh, this channel has a 14 million subscribers so it's a humongous channel so it's gonna be good watching this i don't know people are saying in the comments in some videos that i might not be able to you know react to this because this channel clamps down on reactions i guess we'll see so yeah, let's watch this one. And remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe so I know which type of topics or which type of videos to react to more. And yeah, I guess you'll be supporting my channel by liking and subscribing. And let's watch this video. What would happen if we were to detonate a very, very powerful nuclear weapon on the moon? Would the explosion knock its orbit towards Earth, causing tidal waves and misery? Could the moon be destroyed, showering the Earth in a rain of meteoric death? In order to destroy the moon, you would need immense level of powerful nukes. I don't think all the nukes that we have, all the thousands and thousands combining of all the nukes, even if we throw them at it, I don't think even that is enough to destroy the moon completely. During the Cold War, the moon was a major target for space exploration and, you know, military bases. So, the US Air Force commissioned a serious study into the effects of a nuclear detonation on the surface of the Moon. But just quoting stuff is boring, so let's conduct a very important scientific experiment with an imaginary 100 megaton thermonuclear warhead about twice as powerful as the most powerful bomb ever detonated. We'll also place a number of curious astronauts around the Moon as observers. Let's push the button and slow down time. For the first few milliseconds, nothing much happens outside our weapon. Meanwhile, inside, high explosives send a shockwave to a radioactive metal core, compressing it so much that it reaches criticality and starts a nuclear fission chain reaction. The 100 million degree plasma created in this first stage sets off the second stage with atomic nuclei fusing like they do in the core of a star. He's talking about hydrogen bomb there. So it's a big bomb, not some fission bomb that was dropped on Japan. So there is a small fission bomb inside this fusion bomb that is going to feed the fusion bomb. So basically a hydrogen bomb needs a fission bomb inside like plutonium bomb or something like that. So that re that creates the heat and the heat eventually, you know, starts the nuclear fusion process which is just titanic. Like nuclear fission bombs are nothing compared to the gigantic hydrogen bombs. Very briefly, our weapon contains one of the hottest places in the universe. And only now, barely 10 milliseconds later, does the rest of the universe find out that anything has happened as suddenly the bomb dissolves and a flaming star of nuclear death is born. So far, so good. But everything that happens now is very different from what we're used to on Earth because of one major difference. 
there's no atmosphere. Yeah, no shock wave. As the fireball shines, it releases a flash of X-rays and thermal photons, a wave of silent heat which rushes outwards in all directions. On Earth, this heat would char and burn everything within a 50-kilometer radius at least. But on the Moon, without an atmosphere and oxygen-rich air, there's no burning at all. Also, there are no things to burn. The crunchy topsoil of the Moon is made from silicate rock and metals chewed to dust by eons of meteorite impacts mixed with tiny traces of water. When heated by the explosion, X-rays from the fireball vaporize a thin cloud of rock from the lunar surface, while the unlucky dust that's inside the fireball melts into glass. Any astronauts watching the show within about 50 kilometers yeah, can expect fight. to be fried. And now we begin to see one of the biggest differences between explosions in space and on Earth. On Earth, the atmosphere fights back against the plasma bubble. Yeah. Its expansion is violently stopped within moments by the pressure of the atmosphere. But this is not good news. As the fireball rams shockwave. the atmosphere, it produces the most destructive part of a nuclear explosion on Earth, the shock wave. Compressed air around the explosion rushes out faster than the speed of sound, shattering buildings and roaring so loud. Shockwave does the most damage, I think. I mean, obviously, radiation is there too, but you know, immediate impact damage that we see, most of them come from shockwaves. Out it ruptures organs. But on the moon, there is no shockwave. Yeah. No atmosphere means nothing to impede the expanding explosion in space. On the moon, the fireball just grows in eerie silence as there's no atmosphere to stop it or to give it a voice. This would be an amazing thing to watch from a safe distance. Radius. Unfortunately, there's hardly any safe viewing distance for a nuclear explosion on the moon. Without an atmosphere weakening the deadly ionizing radiation that can scramble DNA, anyone close enough to get a good look will be exposed to fatal amounts of radiation. But of course, that's not all. I mean, that's relative, isn't it? First of all, if you're in space, sun's radiation is already way too dangerous in the first place. So you would have some kind of a ship that protects you from the radiation. If that's the case, I don't think nukes radiation is going to be too destructive for that. I think ship can take it. If you are in specific suit and moon, uh, moon not moonwalking, spacewalking outside of your ship, and then uh, this thing happens. I guess some of the radiation might be overwhelming for the suit because suits are just barely protecting you against the sun. So I don't know. Maybe against the suit it might be dangerous, but I don't think inside some kind of a shuttle or something, you, you would be fine. Cool. While all of this happens, the explosion hammers against the moon, transferring about a tenth of the explosion energy into seismic waves, powering an intense moonquake. The moon is much smaller than the Earth, and our astronauts will feel an inescapable violent shaking no matter where they're standing. Comparable to an earthquake of seven on the Richter scale, this shaking could seriously damage or even level infrastructure we might have built anywhere on the moon. Those who hit on the far side of the moon would have no idea it was an explosion. The quaking would feel like a... Again, uh, if we build something on the moon, I would like to think we build it much sturdier. So, you know, Richter scale of 7, I don't think we're going to build anything that's the Richter scale of 7 could level. I mean, there would be destruction, but not, not the level. It wouldn't level things up. An asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid had struck. And it's not over yet. Where our bomb explodes, the ground splatters like water when a rock strikes a pond. As the explosion pushes against the surface, it may excavate as much as 100 million cubic meters of dust and rock, forming a crater a kilometer across while bedrock is pulverized to rubble. Debris is shot into the sky in every direction. Again, with Yeah, this is a small bomb relative to what I was thinking of. Uh, so I don't think this would have big chunks of rock coming towards the Earth. And whatever good enough size the rocks would come, I think Earth's atmosphere would cross most of it and it won't be a threat I think without an atmosphere there's no drag to slow any of it down much of the debris scattered never returns to the moon flying off faster than escape velocity a flurry of micro meteorites have been cast off to explore the solar system many of which will rain down on the earth though few will be larger than pebbles any satellite astronaut or space station in the way though will have a really bad time Micro meteorites are launched at many speeds and angles, allowing them to spread all over the surface of the moon. Like bullets, they'll punch through our curious astronauts no matter where they stand. 
Finally, our explosion comes to an end. On Earth, the fireball rises like a hot air balloon, forming a sort of stalk. Yeah. As it reaches up, cooler air is drawn in around it, rounding the top into a mushroom cloud. But on the Moon, well, you know by now, no atmosphere, no mushroom. The larger the plasma gets, the cooler it becomes, and the less energy it has to make interesting or terrifying things happen. Within seconds of pulling the trigger, the bubble reddens and fades from view. It would be visible from the Earth like a star flickering to life only to fade out right away. A spark and then nothing. As the cloud of tiny debris reaches far above the surface of the Moon, it's illuminated by the Sun for a few minutes, giving it an eerie beauty for anyone left to observe the spectacle. Yeah. What about the Moon's orbit? It's basically unchanged. Yeah, it's trying scant. to move the Moon with a nuke is like trying to move a truck by blowing on it. Nuclear explosions may be big, but space is bigger. Our mighty explosion just leaves another crater. Yeah, I mean, you can't affect the moon if there's just one bomb. Like I said, if all the bombs in the world, if you throw it at the moon, maybe we'll see some difference. But then again, large chunks of the rocks would, you know, just come out and hit us. That's why people say the space force. And people are afraid of, hmm, there's going to be battle on the space. Nah, man, space is not... We, we our intuition is surrounded around the, you know, all things that happen on the earth with the environment. When it comes to space, things change. So, you know, even a simple bolt, if it gets loose and it's, you know, orbiting orbiting around the Earth, it, it could be like a bullet piercing lots of satellites and could cause a chain reaction. So anything you want to destroy, you know, destroying is not the point. Even if the asteroid is coming, you want to deflect it because massive chunk of those uh, rocks could, you know, uh, get in, uh, you know, Massive chunks of rocks could just come at the earth and cause massive issues. So if you really want to hurt the moon and want to destroy lots of chunks of it, all those chunks are going to land on the earth and that's it. It's a like dinosaur level event. So why would you want to destroy the moon? I mean, yeah. Obviously, astrophysics and lost astronomers would want to do that since I learned that their biggest enemy is the moon. Because of the moon and full moon, they can't, they can't observe the space. So maybe they want to do it, I guess. Prater, one among millions. Still, anyone on the moon will continue to not enjoy themselves. The material that ends up raining back to the moon is radioactive, and without any natural processes to wash it away or bury it, the surface of the moon will remain contaminated. Although fortunately, the worst of the radiation will have decayed to a level comparable to natural levels from cosmic rays in about a year. In conclusion, we can say with confidence that while the moon itself does not care about being nuked and will barely notice, using the moon as a nuclear test ground kind of ruins it for everyone trying to spend some time there or to build something useful. So maybe we should just not do that. This I mean, nuking the moon was a big thing when we didn't test the nukes on the Earth, when everybody was afraid that nukes going to, you know, ignite the atmosphere of Earth and it's going to create a reaction that would, nobody would be able to stop it. Then it was more appealing, like, let's test it on the moon. Now we kind of mastered how the nukes work. So even if, even if somebody wants to make a bigger nuke, they don't need to test it in a way to know it will probably work. So, you know, testing on the moon is unnecessary, I think. And anyway, you know, if you want to spend something on, you know, something on the moon, you want to put it on some kind of a rocket. Not some intercontinental ballistic missiles, but a giant rocket like, you know, the, 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 of space rockets. So if you put it on there and if it explodes, I mean, there's a massive issue because it will spread all around the world. Uh, you know, intercontinental ballistic missiles are kind of small, they are contained and chance of it going wrong is really low compared to the space rockets. So there's always, you know, danger there. That is the reason why all the nuclear waste people say, let's just throw it on the, in, in the space, throw it in the sun. I mean, there is no space to store it here. But if you put it on the rocket and try to launch it in the space and it fails, there's nuclear radiation everywhere. This was our last video of the year 12,020 and uh, oh dear what an interesting and weird year it's been in all the worst ways. But it's finally over. We want to end it by saying thank you. We get to do this channel and work on many exciting things because of you burbs. 
This year, our German channel reached a million subscribers, we launched our Spanish one and released our first app. If everything goes well, we can finally start our largest new project to date next year, but we know better than to promise too much. All of this works because you support us directly. Thank you so much. We genuinely appreciate it. If you want to help us out too and get something cool in return... Yeah. So that's all for the video. It was an interesting video, but yeah, I kind of knew that obviously. It's it's hard to find space videos that surprises me. I really want to, you know, react to some complicated topics. This is kind of, you know, intuitive, I guess, that, you know, if you put some one nuke, I mean, that's not going to do anything. I knew that kind of. But yeah, radiation would be dangerous, but I don't think, like I said, if there is a, sh you know, space shuttle there, I mean, it's already equipped with, you know, handling the sun's radiation. So I think nuke's radiation might be overwhelming, but it, I think it will be fine. So yeah, alright people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out all the reaction I did, there's a link in the description with all of my videos and yeah, I guess I'll see you next time.